first set of schools that we launched out after Harvard were schools that had other kind of school specific social networks. So I think it was Stanford had something, um, Columbia had something, and I think Yale had something. So I think why those, did you choose ones that had school specific social networks? Because they could I wanted to competitors. Well, I wanted to go to the schools that I thought would be the hardest for us to succeed at because first. I knew that if we had a product that was better than everything else that other students were making at other colleges, then it would be worth investing in and putting and putting time into. But I didn't want to just kind of like get into a project where there would end up being this huge legacy of maintaining it if ultimately there were just going to be different things that were as good as it. I started Alibaba in 1999. Um, I want to share some of the things. At first, we believe in the future. And I believe the internet can empower a lot of people. It's not Jack Ma helped so many people. It's the entrepreneurships, the spirit of creating, the spirit of constructive advice and devise. And very, also very, very important is that we believe technology will help people for a better future. So we try to be creative, we try to solve problems. When people complain, we don't complain. We think about complaining of the other people is always a great opportunity. If we can solve the complaining, and then we have the solutions, then we have the future. So we do Alibaba because we believe in, there are so many small businesses don't know when and how, where they can sell the products. So we help them to promote their products. We have the payment because no banks at that time love to help small business and they don't know how to help small business. You know, if we don't have the payment, our e-commerce is just a talk on the line. It's just a chat online. So we have this payment. And then we find if we cannot help you to deliver efficiently and quickly, then there will be no way. So we build up the, the, uh, the logistic system. And then we find a lot of companies don't know have the technology especially small business. They don't know how to use the internet. The, the internet service is too expensive for them. So we say, all right, let's build up the cloud computing. So every small business can use cloud computing, internet technology cheaply and efficiently. So it's all about solving problems. So I think this is what we did in the past 20 years. We always think about what we can do to solve the social problems instead of complaining. That's that's the journey, and I'm having great fun. When you really help people, when you see millions of people change their lives because the efforts that we work together. Being an entrepreneur is about taking risks, but it's about taking very calculated risks and being, you know, protecting the downside. So I didn't quit my job selling fax machines until I had already invented the product. I was working on it at night and on the weekends for two years. I was driving around North Carolina where most hosiery was made, begging a bunch of manufacturing plants to help make it. And I didn't quit my job until I had already landed Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, and got a call from Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a typical day. <laughs> then I was like, okay, I feel confident to quit, but I needed the income that was coming in and I needed my health care benefits. And I was working out of my apartment in Virginia Highlands and I ran Spanx out of my apartment for two and a half years. And it was crazy. I mean, I'd send my trucks pulling up twice a week to this apartment and my neighbors were like, what's happening? What's going on? But I was so conservative with my finances in the beginning. I was very scrappy and still am really scrappy. Failure and invention are inseparable twins. Um, you know, it's everybody wants to uh, be inventive. You know, if you go talk to corporate America or uh, any any institution, actually, uh, government agencies and so on, innovation is something to be proud of. People like invention, but the problem is they don't like failure, and you cannot have invention without failure. Um, if you uh, to know where, if you already know it's going to work, it's not an experiment. And only through experimentation can you get real invention. The most important inventions come from trial and error with lots of failure. And, and the failure is critical, um, and it's also embarrassing. And so that's why people, and, and when we're kids, we always are doing trial and error. And we're never embarrassed. You know, you watch a little toddler and they will try for hours to put a square peg in a round hole and it never works. But it doesn't keep them from trying. 
And they try things like that, and that's how they learn. And, uh, and, and, and we all have that when we're little. And then as we get older, somehow, it's not as cool as you get older to fail and to fall down. It looks clumsy. Uh, and so we get in our grooves, we have a set of expertise and skills, it's kind of a comfort zone. And you have to constantly push yourself to say, no, I don't care about failure. In fact, if you're not, I say at Amazon, we have to grow the size of our failures as the size of our company grows. We have to make bigger and bigger failures because otherwise none of our failures will be needle movers. And so I would see it as a very bad sign over the long run if Amazon wasn't making larger and larger failures. And if you do that all along the way, that is uh, gonna protect you from ever having to make that big, you know, kind of Hail Mary bet that you sometimes see companies make right before they fail and go out of existence. You can use your gifts, that's what you're really here to do, to illuminate the darkness in our world. So this is what I also know, that this, this, this moment in time, this is your time to rise. It is. Even though you can't go anywhere, you can't stand in line at Starbucks, you can't go to a party, you can't go to any place without, everywhere you turn, people are talking about how bad things are, how terrible it is. And this is what I know. The problem is everybody is meeting hysteria with more hysteria. And then we just are all becoming hysterical and it's getting worse. What I've learned all these years is that we're not supposed to match it or even get locked into resisting or pushing against it. We're supposed to see this moment in time for what it is. We're supposed to see through it and then transcend it. That is how you overcome hysteria. And that is how you overcome the sniping at one another, the trolling, the mean-spirited partisanship on both sides of the aisle, the divisiveness, the injustices, and the out-and-out -out hatred. You use it. Use this moment to encourage you, to embolden you, and to literally push you into the rising of your life. And to borrow a phrase from my beloved mentor, Maya Angelou, just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like the hopes springing high, you will rise. Everything you do learn is cumulative. I mean, that doesn't mean that industries stay good forever or businesses stay good forever, but, but learning to think about business models, what I learned at 20 is useful to me now. What I learned at 25 is useful to me now. And so, it's not, it's, not so, it's not a field that changes dramatically in terms of the underlying principles. It's like physics. I mean, there's underlying principles. Now, they're doing all kinds of things with physics they weren't doing 50 years ago. But, but if, if you know the, if, if you've got the principles, if you know what makes a good business, if you know what makes a good manager, you know, if you know what makes a, a, a good product, uh, and you learn that in one business, you can, there is some transference to other businesses you go along and you learn what things you, you're not going to understand. I mean, knowing what to leave out is just as important as knowing what to focus on. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I can win every game. You know, somebody said, how do you beat Bobby Fischer? You play him any game except chess. <laughs> so I don't play Bobby <laughs> Fischer chess. <laughs> and that's, there's a lot of value to learning that over time and, and, and learning what you're good at and what you're not good at. We have a lot of good, good people at SpaceX that, you know, um, a lot of really talented people. Uh, in fact, I wonder, like sometimes, how we can make use of their talents in the best way. Because uh, you know, I think we're often not using their talents in the best way. Um, yeah, but I, I, you know, to, to the point of the question I was just asked, I want to make sure Tesla recruiting does not have anything that says requires university because that's absurd uh, but there is a requirement of evidence of exceptional ability like you just can't if you're trying to do something exceptional they must have evidence of exceptional ability I don't consider going to college evidence of exceptional ability in fact ideally you dropped out and did something I mean obviously you know we look at like you know Gates is a pretty smart guy he dropped out uh, Jobs, pretty smart. He dropped out. You know, Larry Ellison, 
super smart guy. He dropped out. I'm like, obviously not needed. So, did Shakespeare even go to college? Uh, probably not.